Sup Geeks, it's Joe here, and um, I am without Alex today, because I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough. Um, and I'm doing, as some of you may know by now, a lovely little indie game called uh, Thomas Was Alone. Now, as you, as you may be able to see from the uh, resume button right there, I have already played at least some of this game. Uh, I have played all the way through it, and um, yeah, it's a it's it's a great little game. You can uh, pick it up on Steam, I believe, for about five ninety nine, six quid. Um, that is, of course, pounds. Uh, so I don't know what your original equivalent would be. Go figure it out for yourself. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's a very focused a lot on narrative, and of course, because it's a puzzle game, there will be spoilers during this playthrough. So if you fancy playing the game yourself, I would strongly advise against actually watching me play through this otherwise it will ruin all the puzzles um but if you want to just watch it for the narrative because the narrative is brilliant and the characters are so well fleshed out it's incredible it's like um i don't know it's like fable 3 or something except without the whole host of voice actors i just like all the characters in fable 3 they're kind of cool um except it's not quite as quirky as fable 3 it's much more um I don't know why I'm even drawing the uh, the the comparison with Fable 3. To be honest, it's not exactly the greatest game to be comparing it with. Uh, so yeah, I'm doing a, a solo let's play, and uh, yeah, so that's the, let's get let's get into it. Uh, new game. Uh, I will of course be sort of um, talking over the narrative. You'll have to pause that and read it if you want to read it. I will be talking over some of the narrative because I'm a commentator I really can't just go not talking for that long but I will try and stay quiet through some of it Thomas was alone wow a weird first thought to have it is indeed well actually it's not It's not that weird it's kind of what you'd expect from a game called Thomas was alone ooh smart comments I'm, I'm just being smart with the game now GG game over No commentary? Really? I believe the uh, the narrator... Decided to start listing his observations for posterity. For the win. Uh, the narrator is Sean from Assassin's Creed, the I think. Thing. Two. He was a dick in Four. Assassin's Creed, though. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three. Falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. What about the inverted fall, huh? Well, that'll be something for later, I think. So yeah, the music the music in this game is brilliant as well. Interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to... What's the word? Jump. Inverted fall. See? See? It worked. Thomas had solved the great in... Verted full mystery. I can't do a very good impression of that guy. A big jump. But Thomas noticed there was no real danger in missing. Him. <laughs> How? The world Blank. didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. I was just sort of. Uh, I, I was totally just jumping around to let the uh, the narration finish. I wasn't failing completely miserably. Shh! Shut up. I'm a good commentator. I can play video games. This all seemed a little dangerous. Whoa! The world was not to be trusted. It was You're telling me! And it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. So the world's not to be trusted, I think... He's starting to suspect it might even be doing so on purpose. Nah. Paranoia. Definitely, definitely paranoia. It can be anything else. Um, but no, um... That's a strange foreshadowing for the characters later, but I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not going to try and spoil anything because, um, you know, if you're still watching, then you're probably still watching because you want to see the narrative. And um, if I spoil the narrative, then there's not really much point in watching after this episode. Okay. So I think I'm gonna. I just wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but. There wasn't really any way to know. Oh. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right, which might 
or might not be important. I, I wouldn't say it's very important, to be honest. Thomas is a bit paranoid. But that's why we love him. It might have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world He's a bit was paranoid. more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No. Too obvious. Uh, from what I understand, the world is testing him, so I don't know. This this jumping bit, I always fail at this bit. You need to jump right on the edge. Of course, you know, there'll be bits where I fail even harder later, but that's, that's for another time, another episode. And I'll probably be cutting up the footage quite a bit if it, uh, if I, if I really screw up that bad. Toxic glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. Yeah, all the characters here are dead. He made another mental note. Four. Water. Not good. To be avoided. Yeah, they, they, they can't swim. It's like, it's like freaking Grand Theft Auto or some shit. Jesus. But then again, you know, it makes sense because they're all quadrilaterals. I mean, you wouldn't expect them to the swim. Was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note taking could combat that. Yeah. I like how a, a, a quadrilateral can feel lonely. That's that's some of the, the brilliant sort of characterization in this game. Clearly, they've uh, they've created some uh, the people that created these AIs, as you saw at the start, the whole wordy thing that I told you to pause because it really doesn't give you enough time to read. Um, um, yeah, they, it's it's a program that's been created and Thomas is an AI, but I think they've done a pretty good job with the AI, to be honest. I mean, that's a pretty characterful AI. Thomas had a new theory. The world was training him. Training him, he yeah. He feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. <laughs> yeah, a pretty skilled jumper. He just wished he had someone to share it with. So yeah, the the whole there's a lot of uh, themes of loneliness in this game. It's sort of uh, well, it's 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 kind of I don't know, lonely. Which is why Thomas was alone. Anyway, more more words for you. Hundreds of bug reports, overlapping scripts, more than why da da da. da. So yeah, basically that's saying more than one, uh, through glitches, more than one AI was banged to spawn in the area, which is, introduces Christopher here. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? And so yeah, this introduces the sort of non-co-op co-op feature to this, I suppose. Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Well, wow! Really. Talk about dying, it's like Super Chris, Meat Boy. Probably, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. Yeah, leaping about. God. Jeez, Thomas is such a. Wow, I almost, I almost dropped a C bomb there. Yeah, Dromus, Tom, Dromus, Dromus is such a cunt. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I, did I offend you, or your parents? Did I offend your parents? I'm sorry. No, I, seriously, sincerely, I am sorry if I offended your parents. Sorry, parents, or, or people. If, if you're offended by that, sorry. The C bombs, they were, they were quite a touchy subject with some people. Personally, I don't have a problem with them, but. You know. But from now on, if I want to drop a C-bomb, I'll just say Clunch. You ever seen Hot Fuzz? Yeah, that's from there. Or, or Shaun of the Dead, you know, depends which one you watch first. Personally, I watched Hot Fuzz first, and I've always preferred it. But, you know, Shaun of the Dead, yeah, it's, it's bloody good. Um, so, yeah, we're on... We're, we're blasting through these. But it's gonna get harder. The glowy white thing. 
<laughs> Only Chris could get to it, which of course made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? So now we're, we're really, really sort of having to work at this co-op. You have to move Thomas to allow Chris to jump on his head and then uh, move Thomas back up here. Uh, there we go. And then allow Chris to jump up and then Thomas can jump up. And so on until, you know, you've Wait, navigated the stairs. Well, a chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. <laughs> Seriously, this made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. So yeah, Chris really doesn't like Thomas. As you can probably tell. Um. Was this good? Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fun, happy to be a merry little adventure. Jesus, frame rate. Wow. Chris couldn't shake the Don't know what happened there. Taking a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. So you have already been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where did that go in? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. Is this Chris's? Yeah, this is Chris's way. Um, but now you get a, a sense of each character has their own sort of backstory. You know, they were all spawned in, and they all sort of come together. But each one's been through their own training beforehand, like Thomas. You know, so they each know how to use, you know, how to use their special abilities. But unfortunately, you don't. That's the problem. Okay, so. We've got we've got uh, Chris along there. Interesting. Whoa! I'm getting a lot of frame rate today. I don't know what the problem is. Anyway, we'll try and we'll try and work around it. Um. So there we go. with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. That would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a Damn it. <laughs> hmm, from the vaulting idiot. Vaulting idiot God. The next portal would split them up. If only for a few levels. Hmm. I think maybe it does, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Right. No, it, it's here that splits them up. So Thomas has to go up here. While uh Chris goes down there, so we'll deal with Thomas first, and then we'll deal with Chris. It's like a a, a single-player co-op game. It's really, really kind of interesting. This game. You know, it's like it's like some of the puzzles you had in like um, you know, the original sort of Lego games. I, I they well, I still do them now, but uh, you know, I only ever played the originals, like Lego Star Wars. That was a damn good game. I love that game, but um. You know, you had to switch between the characters so you could get one character to stand on a button while the other characters did other stuff. Um, and, you know, Jar Jar Binks could jump higher than everyone else. Which actually gave him a purpose, which was strange because no Star Wars fan was used to Jar Jar Binks having a purpose. That's like somebody giving a teaspoon a character. See what I did there? I referenced Harry Potter. Emotional range of a teaspoon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not. Okay. Oh, and there's a new character now. This was his chance. A moment to shine. This was game day. Game day. That sounds like a, a really terrible trailer for a movie. This was game day in Cinemas Tuesday. Let's just move them along. So there'll be a lot of stacking of people, of the the quadrilaterals, the characters in the game, throughout it. A lot, like a lot. Dude. This would not do. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. 
as it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. So yeah. Where did they come from anyway? Here we go. So I think in the next next area, yeah, John's gonna get some jumping skills in here. John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Yeah, it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time, to show those little dots how it was done. Yeah. This is how it's done. Decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. I don't like John very much. A lot of the characters are not very likable. They're brilliant but unlikable. They each have their foibles. It's sort of they're they're unlikable, but at the same time they're quite likable. You know, each each character has you know has a sides to them. Um, I think after this, yeah, after this area, I'm gonna bring it to a close. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is, uh, this has been, and still is, Thomas was alone, and, um, I have been, and still am, Joe. Although I still have a lot of puzzle to go, so, uh, I probably shouldn't do the outro until I can see the ending, and I know I can get to the ending. Anyway, um, so yeah, I wonder, what do you guys think of this game? Uh, I mean, because me, I, re I really like this game. It's a really cool game, and it, it explores character really well. Um, but maybe maybe you guys just don't like it because, uh, because it's a puzzler. Because, you know, I, I have a lot of problems with puzzlers. I just don't like them. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, <laughs> I need to figure out this, this particular puzzle now. Uh, and then we shall sign off. Uh, but yeah, this is this is this is a really fun game, uh, and you know I, I find sort of motivated to do some of the harder puzzles because I want to know what happens in the narrative next, which is not something that you know games don't normally motivate you by using narrative. It's it's quite quite unique in that sense. Anyway, uh, I think we're almost done here, so I will see you guys next time on Thomas Was Alone!